today is midweek, uh, the third official work day of the week. Thank you very much for joining us this morning on the platform. This is the pinnacle of all discussions where we take a critical look at issues as it affect our dear nation, Nigeria, and also as it affect our dear state, Abia State. It is still part of our morning show. We call our morning spies. Uh, we call our morning show right here breakfast show we call it morning spies and this is the discussion segment of course uh, we chat away forward on some of those issues bordering on economy on politics on business you can name it of course uh, as it affects uh, different sectors of the country both in nigeria and also we step it down to abia state welcome on board the program runs every monday every wednesday and also every friday right here the flow of god's own state my name is michael oni now this morning what is the topic of discussion now i know you must have heard what is happening in the news especially coming from um enugu state of course uh, the life the issue of life pension for ex-governors yes uh in case you've not heard the news let me just bring you up to spill uh, up to speed rather a bill seeking to amend the law on pension for former governors and their deputies in enugu state it generated a lot of controversy the amendment if passed into law would guarantee life pension for former governor and their deputies including their spouses interesting interestingly uh, enugu is following the path which other Nigerian states have pulled back from? Kwara State, Zamfara State, Animo State uh, are among uh, the states that have uh, cancelled pensions for their former governors. Uh, I remember sometimes last uh, year, uh, it was November last year, Lagos State Governor Babajide Sonwolu uh, submitted a bill to the Lagos State House of Assembly for the repeal of the 2007 law, which provides pension for former governors in and their deputies in Lagos State. Did Enugu bill, which passed the second reading in the house of assembly uh, was described as obnoxious and of course repressive by a chieftain of the apc in the southeast anyways and a lot of stakeholders also you know they kicked against it and it, that um affected the bill and the bill was finally stepped down at the enugu state house of assembly so we're going to be looking at that this morning uh what is going to be your view and you're going i know you will share your thoughts with me this morning on the program uh but just before we get to that point uh before we get to that point i'm going to list out the states we have 23 out of the uh, 26 23 i will be very specific very soon uh out of the state of the federation that have uh, uh passed that into law uh, some of them have submitted a bill to repeal that law some they have it as a law in the state i'm going to get to that uh in 18 83 otto van vixmark uh, who later became the chancellor of germany was up in arms against the marxists uh, who were gaining around they were gaining ground in the country on a daily basis back in the day that was in 1883 in a single master stroke he proposed to the Reichstag, the, that's the Reichstag, uh, the, that's the parliament that anyone over the age of 65 should be made to retire with a pension for life uh, this made him extremely popular and outwitted his opponents for political power well in 1889 the policy was implemented and most countries in the world have adopted a pension plan for the aged though the age varies in from nation to nation nigeria is no exception civil servants also get pensionable either at the age of 60 or when they have spent 35 years in service uh, ju so just to uh, give you a background and the governor of nigerian state is a very powerful individual his access to wealth enormous he's both uh, he's the both chief accountant and the chief spender of all the resources of the state in fact funds for the remaining two arms of the government are not paid independently but are disbursed through the executive branch one of the reasons um, the other arms of government uh, fighting for autonomy are saying we want to have our own funds in and uh, we will be able to control it you know the governor of a state can borrow huge funds using both domestic and external facilities without intention of repaying and the funds are collected in the name of his state governors have access to state security vote uh, of which uh, there is no requirement for it to be accounted for and once there is a uh, desired there is a desire to search for foreign investors 
then esta code is made available on demand for foreign travels and tours but anyways um let's begin the conversation this morning i have uh, joining me uh, lawrence obiwe the convener of a reset nigeria he's a regular on the program lawrence good morning to you uh, glad to have you join us good morning michael i'm um, i'm glad to be here uh, thank you very much uh it's uh first time speaking to you in a couple of months uh, now so it's yeah. still proper to say happy new month to you uh lawrence uh, thank you very thank much. thank you very much we, we, the we same have a thing. Very critical issue to dissect this morning the issue of uh pension for ex governors and uh, uh and uh, their deputies in fact sometimes it covers their spouses you know i don't know what should be your take we have over 20 states in the country that uh, that's has been passed into law and it has been followed uh, what's your take before um i step it down to what happened in enugu uh, yesterday uh, uh, recently okay thank you very much for having me um i think it's something that has been belated but uh, it's better that we are discussing it now and mm. um, i'm keeping quiet uh, unfortunately citizens have been more engrossed with uh, challenging the f uh, federal government and allowing the states to get away with everything they are doing. I think this started in Plateau in 2000 and I, between 2000 and 2001, when the then president, uh, governor of Plateau State, Joshua Dari, um, submitted an executive bill to the Plateau State House of Assembly for this monumental, unaccounted uh, pension that has never been seen anywhere in the world, and it was passed. Um, about 23 to 24 states, other states have followed suit since then. Um, more than two thirds of the states in Nigeria now have those pension in place now um if you look at the pension the first of all is illegal Let, let's look from the legal point of view um for every money that that is non-deductible where you don't get tax you don't deduct allowances mm. our constitution states clearly that it has to be fixed by the revenue mobilization allocation and fiscal commission so it means that this uh, laws in the state are illegal because they said any law that runs contrary to the laws of the federal republic of nigeria is null and void so, uh, are, That's you, on are, one you, are you saying uh, the, uh, you're going to continue this your analysis but are you saying despite being passed into law uh, by the state houses of assembly in those uh, 24 states uh, we're talking about now are you saying they that, are still uh, illegal they are still illegal. Yeah, they, are sti they are still illegal because the constitution says that any law that runs contrary to that of the fed uh, the constitution is uh, null and void now there's also a judgment uh, by one uh, chief judge or i think chief, uh, chief judge of the high court in fct mm -hmm. who uh, described it as illegal and ordered the attorney general of the federation to challenge it up to the supreme court for explanation unfortunately that uh, the attorney general has not been uh, has not done that that's two number three is the fact that the pension act of nigeria states clearly that for anybody to be uh, eligible for pension that person would have spent at least 10 years providing public or private service now in 2004 that's the third one in 2004 Nigeria changed its pension uh, laws from the normal drawing of pension to contributory. So the law, the pension law in Nigeria now means that you only draw for what you have contributed, not the state paying you. So from the legal point of view, it is completely illegal. Now, let's even look at some of the reasons that they give. Um, it will make them to focus on their uh, on this duties of state power state duties and take them away from uh, illegal accumulation of uh, wealth that's what most of the governors and their deputies will tell you but history has told us that that has not happened um we know that joshua Darier is presently in in a uh, jail for state theft of state fund the same thing with uh jolly nyame of taraba taraba state who happens to be a pastor a clergyman we also have the same thing it is only Apache from the grave today that is vomiting more money than the former Delta State Governor James Ibori from uh, theft of state fund. Let's take it home. Oju Zakalu was uh, recently released from prison as a result of theft of fund. Released on the account that the judge who gave the judgment was not supposed to give the judgment. Not that he did not steal state fund. So that reason they are telling you about focusing on uh, state duties instead of illegal accumulation of wealth is still not holding water okay now uh, 
uh, uh, Lawrence, now this bill is being opposed by a lot of Nigerians. For example, some of these governors, they've served for more than four years, some, some of them eight years. Are you saying they are not entitled to something, at least after serving the people for eight years? Be, be beyond the outrageous uh, money and uh, the emoluments uh, being earmarked uh, through these uh, uh, laws in place. Well, I am. It is not Lawrence saying. It is the law of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. The, the the law of pension in Nigeria states that for you to be eligible, you must have spent at least ten years providing public or private service. I don't know any governor in Nigeria that spends more than eight years. That's the maximum that our constitution allows. So it is not Lawrence saying it. It is the law of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Now, if you look at what they are taking home, then you begin to ask yourself. Uh, let me give you an instance. I think Abia has about four, four former deputy governors, two former uh, governors. If you state, the survey has shown that they take about between 350 and 400 million on annum per uh, pair of it, a, a former state governor and a former deputy governor. Now, if you put that together in Abia, it will be running about a billion naira. Abia state as a state earns a little, just a little less than a billion naira monthly from internally generated revenue. So it means that for every year in Abia that you have to use the internally revenue, uh, generated revenue of at least a month to be able to service former chief executives in, in the state. I don't know how rational that is sounds to uh, the general public or you, the media people, but I think that is unthinkable. I think it's the most unreasonable thing that you can ever now, do. This. You, won't, if, you won't blame, you won't blame uh, the provision of this by the law. Can't we go back to when this law uh, is, is, is a, was a bill before it was being passed by the House of uh, Assembly in these various states of the Federation, over 20 of them, and uh, that made it a law in those states and it's been followed by by the states uh, in question i i think the major the, the major question to ask is um what is the relationship between a state governor and the, the state house of assembly of that state i don't think that we need to go very far to get the answer i think we already know that the state the state houses of assembly are just uh the belt with which the governor used to tie his uh, trouser so I don't think that there's any doubt about why it is not being challenged at the State House of Assembly. Of course, you can blame the citizens who keep quiet when these things uh, keep happening. Um, if not, I, I think this uh, new uh, revolution against the started in Zafra State, when the state government deliberately leaked a letter written by the former, uh, former, former state governor, governor complaining, governor. complaining that his uh, allowances and pension has not been paid for a mm. uh, few months, so that started generating heat. Immediately, the, the governor of Imo State, Hope Ozodema, um, quickly sent an executive bill to the House of Assembly to repeal the law. And I think he, uh, up to date, he's the, first, he's the only governor that has signed a repeal to repeal uh, that Kwara pension state law. also has a repeal to the law. No. Uh, Imo State also repealed uh, that. Uh, well, I don't know whether Kwara, I know that Kwara has started the process. But I, I don't think that the governor has signed. Uh, I think he uh, must stay there. Lagos Lega, okay. State submitted a bill to repeal the law, uh, the life pension bill law. Uh, so, uh, yes. So, as it stands, there are a lot of uh, actions around repealing the law. But I think the only concrete one has come from Imo State, where the governor has abolished that law. So, uh, I don't think we should be asking too much questions about the state houses of assembly. We should be asking too much questions about the consciences of citizens, people who stay and watch these things. Because I believe that citizens should be able to occupy the level of poverty. Look at Enugu, for instance. The, the Nigerian Bureau of Statistics just released its, its data. Enugu has about 54% poverty rate in Nigeria. That's one of the highest in the Southeast. But they are making effort to join the League of Illegalities that uh, has uh, prevailed in Nigeria since 2001. So they are not talking about how to alleviate the poverty uh -huh. status of their people. What so they are talking about is what they take home after milking the, the state dry. Don't forget that most of these governors have cases of uh, theft in, in court. So these laws are not really protecting them against the uh, stealing of state funds, but is engraving their, their greed.
All so right. it's not right. something to ask a, a question, but I think there is something Nigerians should now stand up and fight in the All various right. state houses of assembly. L- Lawrence, sir, I do really appreciate you. Thank you very much for your, for your analysis. The take home from your analysis this morning is that uh, the people should fight against that law. It should never be a law that uh, as governors and deputies and maybe speakers of house of assemblies uh, should uh, receive life pension uh, after their service in office. Thank you very much right. for having I me. I do appreciate Lawrence. Do appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you very much. All right, uh, that's uh, Lawrence Obiwe, uh, convener of Reset Nigeria. And of course, it is this, still the platform. Let me give you a background of what uh, uh, brought about this uh, conversation again this morning. It's been on, uh, remember you heard Lawrence referring to the issue in Zamfara State. The latest, uh, of course, yesterday, yesterday in Enugu State, Enugu State House of Assembly stepped down the controversial life pension bill for former governors and their deputies and also their spouses. The stepping down of that bill followed public outcry about the jumbo packages contained in it for the beneficiaries. The bill sought to appropriate at least 900% of a governor's annual salary at his monetary as is his monetary entitlement every year after leaving office. And the wife of the governor would also have 12 million naira as annual medical allowances provided she was married to the governor while in office. Apart from the 12 million naira provided uh, for a governor's wife, former governor's wife only, anyways, as annual medical allowance, both ex governor and ex first lady would also receive free medical services until death. The bill guarantees to cover almost any possible major expenses an ex governor could incur in his or her life including financial responsibility for burial and um, many persons came out and said well very outrageous very outrageous in the section says it states that uh, when a former governor or former deputy dies the state government shall make adequate arrangements and bear the financial responsibility for his burial so i'm going to turn the lines open very soon but i still have to talk to some other resource uh, persons this morning uh, to help us analyze this and of course uh, what should what should if nigerians are kicking against this uh what should be a take home what should be the take home package or packages uh, anyway it is uh for these uh, ex uh, governors of course and of course uh, ex uh, deputy governors i have a uh, michael Ilya diago uh, joining me he's a journalist a namesake and a public affairs commentator michael good morning to you good morning uh, thank you very much for joining us this morning on the platform on flow 94.9 fm you must have heard the news um, what happened in enugu yesterday uh, that led to the state house of assembly uh, stepping down that uh, controversial life pension bill for former governors and their deputies and also uh, their spouses i don't know what you make of this do you think uh, the public outcry uh, following that uh, bill uh, is actually just and uh, okay that uh, people are saying well it should be stepped down or do you think that it has any political coloration or people just don't like the fact that governors are taking home uh, some money after serving uh, for about eight years in some cases i don't even know how to come with this question but let me also ask you something before i say whatever i will say if you are a graduate with a class you graduated with a class DSC or hastily decision, and you are in a state where you they will start, uh, they will they will give you employment with level eight, and they will put you or put you on a scale of five thousand naira a month, and you hear in the same state that the wife of the ex governor, not even incumbent governor, ex governor who has started for maybe four eight days and they have exhausted their eight days that the woman will be giving one one million every month just for being the wife of the government. So what am I saying? I want to arrive mm-hmm. to the point. Yes, we have a, a, a we have a, a public advert against the bill and that is the name. When you look at what is going on in the state, when you look at uh, uh, job creation in the state, when you look at the rate of unemployment in the state, when you look at every industry that will tell you that more people are being more poor and more poor on daily basis, and they are coming up with a kind of deal that will be like a host 
the issue of why the whole thing. So for me, there is a public outcry, and that was in the right direction, and that is why they set it down. But what we are saying, it's not about setting it down, because it's, it's like a political, it's like they are playing to the government. They said they came out and said, okay, we set it down, but we are asking them to repeal the bill or the law. Yes, the law has been in existence since 2007. Okay, uh, Michael, we have about uh, 23, 24 states in the Federation that uh, passed this law until it was repealed by some states like Imo State, uh, Zamfara State. Legal State already submitted a bill to repeal that life pension bill. Who should we, we blame if it is anti-people uh, uh, and um, it has been passed? It has been passed by um, uh, two-thirds of the states of the Federation. Who should we blame? It was passed. No one talked about it. There was public hearing. It passed first. Uh, uh, it passed the first reading. It passed second reading before it got to the community of whole, and uh, it was passed into law. We have the House of uh, Houses of Assembly to also checkmate the uh, activities of the executive. So, who should we blame in this uh, scenario? I think we should blame the people. We should blame the people, not even those in government. Because those in government, what they want actually is the things that we favor them. We should blame the people. But what, why are we are blaming the people? Also, those in government are part of the people. Because government is made out of the people. Or from the people. So, and again, let's take Enugu for instance. That every other state is doing it. It's not a guarantee that you do it in your own state. If they have bad policy, will you go and copy it? Because every other state is doing it. You go and copy it. Why don't you copy good things? We are looking at a bill that we make a new state to spend over a billion naira on ex governors on annual basis. And these people are not up to 10 families. And they are giving a 10 billion naira. So where are we going from here? Imagine in the next 20, 30 years, when we have more governors, ex-governors, what will happen? That means, once we get our federal allocation, we just give it to two or three families, and that's all. So, it's not about being practiced in every other place. It's about the viability of the states that are implementing it. Any good state is not viable. Look at our idea. How much are we generating? How much is our federal allocation? If Lagos is really an annual budget of Lagos is eight years of Enugu State. Interesting. So can we get a copy of the Lagos is really? I I interesting. Now, uh, now that it has been stepped down, uh, can you give us a feel of what uh, the residents of en Enugu uh, feel after it has been stepped down? Their voices have been their voices have we been are, heard. We are, going the for House a, of we are going for a pair. We want them to drop it entirely. What we are taking for is for it to be dropped. We want them to drop the law. They said it has been there since 2007. That's they said they are, they are not the one that initiated that. They say they are going for public uh, public hearing so that they will remove some clauses from the day and also inject some. That's good. But what we are asking, this law is anti-people. This law is anti-development. All right. Let me tell you, the government, this present government, the highest job they created is, is those who uh, clean the streets. And they are paid between the staff and 30 k per month. Interesting. This government uh, has not given up to 5,000 people employment. How many individuals of the United States graduate every year? We cannot boost up creating a uh, job opportunity for 10,000 people. For the last five years, and what we are interested in is the one that will come. How we share it within the business. 
Okay, uh, Michael, just before I let you go, uh, beyond this uh, jumbo pension packages for ex-governors and their deputies, beyond the, its effect on governance and development, are we saying that uh, they should not be entitled to something even at the end of their service uh, to, to, to the people, maybe after the end of their eight years, after the end of their four years? Sorry, my brother. Maybe? Security vote of every governor can clear off the grass, let me say, security vote of a governor for one year can pay a professor for next for next 30 years. Okay. I don't know if you understand. I'm getting you. It's basic salary. So what are they looking for? This is pure greed of an so, acceptance. In your, in your opinion, after serving the people, maybe for four years or eight years, they should just go home without getting any package or any thank you package from uh, maybe the state uh, government that this they've served. Uh, let me tell you, this is the people who manage our coaching for eight years. Mm. And all of them are not even accounted for. Let me tell you, we are not saying that they don't deserve a sentence or whatever, a package, a pack at the back. But we are looking at the system. Are we viable to consider? Are we viable to do that? Is it because you deserve it? The life gives you. Let me tell you, if you write the exam and you are told to mark yourself, you never fail. So, telling people who are in government to prepare their own pension indirectly, do you think that they will pay themselves for? So, what we are seeing in essence is this. If they deserve something, yes. they are fine. But let's, let's imbibe accountability. Some of these people you are still, you still want to pay pension have series of cases across the uh, uh, across so many courts. If, if it is not uh, if they are not being done by ESPC, it should be one petition or the other. Some of them have 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 so many unaccountable funds, and you still want to uh, benefit from pension scheme. All right, uh, Michael. So let us work on accountability. If they are accountable, we will know. This is how much they made within the last eight years. If you are going, this is how much we'll be paying you. But right. now, we don't even know how much we made as we make as a state how much. So yeah. let us give the attention. All right. Uh, I want to really appreciate you for your analysis this morning on the topic of discussion. Thank you very much. We do appreciate. Thank you, sir. Uh, Michael is uh, a journalist and a public affairs uh, analyst. Uh, Enugu based uh, journalist. Let me add that. Thank you very much. All right. It is still the platform, the pinnacle of all discussions right here on Flow 94.9 FM. We take a short break now. When we return, I'm going to take. Uh, the last person on the program before i throw the lines open i know you have a lot to talk about on the topic of discussion today obnoxious pensions for ex-governors and their deputies uh, we're looking at its effects uh, on governance and development it is the platform the pinnacle of all discussions at flow 94.9 fm we've got conducive and well secured environment for business high tech video studio a state of the act production studio you can also listen live on www.flow949fm.com and watch our videos on youtube at flow fm tv flow 94.9 fm not just radio but a complete broadcasting house Thank you very much for staying tuned. It is still the platform, the pinnacle of all discussions, right here on Flow 94.9 FM, the flow of God's own state, Wednesday edition. And we're looking at the obnoxious suspension for ex-governors, deputies, and its effect on governance and development. We're using a new state as a point of contact. Let me run through the states of the Federation that have already passed that bill into law, and it is in place. Abia State, uh, inclusive, Ebony State, Niger State, Jigawa State, Sokoto State, Anambra State, Jobe State, Castina State, uh, Gombe State, Edo State, Bronu State, Nasarawa State, Boshi State, uh, Oyo State, Kogi State, Kano State, Bayelsa State, Oshun State. It's been repealed in Imo State, it repealed in Zafara State, repealed in Kwara State, and Lagos State has uh, submitted a bill to repeal the uh, pension bill uh, already. And uh, it's on in River State and Old Delta State, Aquaibom State also. So we have joining us um, someone uh, from Enugu State, the former uh, gubernatorial candidate of a political party, UPP, in Enugu, uh, Mr. Ekele Uzodima. 
Uh, glad to have you join us this morning on the platform on Flow 94.9 FM, Umar here in Abia State. Good morning to you. Can you hear me? Okay, so since uh, I have issues with the connection. Hello. Can you hear me? Hello. Can you hear me? Okay, I think we will get uh, uh, back to him. We've got issues with the connection. So I was saying, I just re read out uh, those states uh, of the Federation uh, that have uh, that law in place. You know, um, sometimes citizens of uh, a lot of these states uh, go without salaries for many months. And some states owe workers for up to one year sometimes uh, before paying. Uh, retired workers often die lined up in queues waiting to collect their infrequently call it paid pensions uh, waiting for verification before even thinking of getting their pensions or gratuities uh, okay I, I think i have him uh, again let's see if this will pull through can you hear me now hello good morning to you oh glad to glad to have you join us this morning on the platform on flow 94.9 fm now let's look at that uh, i know that bill must have um, it, it it was greeted with a lot of public outcry uh, by residents of enugu uh, you you represent uh, uh, an opposition voice in the state how did you receive that news uh, initially when the as uh, enugu state house of assembly said uh, well, we are going to pass this into law before the public outcry, before it was uh, dropped. Uh, to me and to other Enugu State indigents as a very shocking news. You know, it further went to show how, how uh, our leaders are very in. If the people will sit on the fence and keep quiet, so began to champion, you know, uh, uh, a revolutionary movement that began to say no to that bill. The bill that will allow a governor after his tenure keep milking the state while he's in Senate to make more money and he will keep receiving that money all through his lifetime was something to uh, to worry about when the people of Enugu State today have so much to cry out for, you know, so much uh, uh, infrastructural decay, so much uh, backwardness in education agricultural infrastructure and health everything about the state is you know going backward but the government was more interested in what gives them money so it becomes very very imperative that we need to rise and i am grateful to the people of enugu state who rose up to the occasion the young men and women took to social media and also marched toward with action they came out yesterday to you know uh to uh, to protest uh, against this uh, bill with all the threats of uh, gunshots they refused and they marched to the house of assembly and uh, it groups were also rising and it became very imperative that this bill will not fly if okay the the way the way it was uh, kicked against by the public is, is another thing that uh, i think we should talk about you know when so, we have a bill on the floor of the house of assembly w there is a stage when the public can also uh, be a part of uh, uh, the, the public hearing stage why sure, not wait sure. for that stage before uh, speaking against this the same thing happened when the uh, labor union uh the and the, uh, the nigeria labor congress and the affiliate unions in the federation also uh, yeah. said something about uh, uh the the issue of minimum wage sure you see if uh, we were in in a in a, a, a claim where things happen the way they should mm. uh we should allow the, the, the house of assembly to sit over the bill then until you get to the public hearing uh, level but sometimes when these bills are discussed and when it gets to the public hearing they don't make it public they just select a few persons and do a media thing and say we've made it public and all of that and they pass the bill so as soon as the people heard about the bill we don't need to wait 
for the bill to pass all the readings until public hearing. We decided to say no before it gets to that point. So there is no other public hearing that will be important more than the masses that marched down to the House of Assembly. You know, so the idea is yes, there is a procedure that gets that, that makes the public get involved at some point. But sometimes these procedures are hijacked, and before you know it, a bill is passed, and it becomes an issue to reverse the bill when it's passed too. So it is in the bill not to allow ourselves to be played played with or you know to be cajoled into allowing the bill go through and the people mm. protested and it's good that they protested before the time you know before the 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 the, 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 the period for public hearing all right let's look at uh, the stepping down of this bill the, the speaker of the enugu state house of assembly edward ubose uh, during plenary that was on tuesday announced the stepping down of this bill and uh, mm. he said the stepping down of the bill would help his colleagues to thoroughly go through it to enable them delete as well as add necessary sections to it i, I want us to look at that statement made by the speaker of the enugu state house of assembly uh, vis a vis uh, what uh, some state government have done it's been repealed which means it can it can no longer stand in in the in the face of the law it's been repealed in zamfara state in kwara state and also Imo state but the speaker is saying stepping down that word stepping down uh, you see is, uh, uh, okay yeah when the speaker said uh, it, it, it's stepping down you know for until the the house discusses the bill I think he's trying to be a little bit uh, political. I had a personal conversation with the Speaker of the House. Okay. You know, I am I am in the forefront of some of the things that, that was happening. So I had a personal conversation with him. I spoke even with the House of Assembly uh, member who is promoting the bill, uh, Honorable Ike Chuku Ezugu. I also reached out to the Deputy Speaker. So based on my conversation with him he said to me categorically that the bill will not fly that that he that he in fact he said he got the bill for the first time yesterday morning he was he was going through the bill when, when i called him and he said he's going through the bill that right now he has, he has seen a lot of things that will make it not fly but we should calm down let let's allow the house of assembly to, to do the needful and he gave me his word that the bill will not fly so probably when he made that statement that they're stepping down i understand that He's a politician, he needs to be a little bit political. But I want to assure you that by the end of the day, the bill will not will not fly. It will it will be scrapped. It will be okay. set aside the, completely. The, just however, like, yes. However, if they continue, then we also will continue to agitate until the bill is not just stepped down but step but taken out away completely. Okay, just, I guarantee you just, that the people of Enugu State will not just, sit back to allow that bill go just, just before I let you go this morning, uh, Mr. Uzodima, I, I want you to uh, some sort of advice to the members of the public to get involved in some of these mm. uh, policies and decisions mm. taken mm. by the arms of government. Because if not for the public outcry, um, some persons might not even understand what was about to happen. Sure. Uh, in the house of uh, house of assembly I, I don't know what will be your opinion about that about people not uh, uh throwing this um uh, i don't care attitude about the mm. governance and of course some of those policies of uh the government thank you so much you know uh for the for the public listening to me we are where we are today because of our silence and our docility and our nonchalant attitude you see we are not helpless for me, the people of Nigeria, the people of the Southeast, we are not helpless. We are just silent. If we wake up and begin to challenge the inadequacies in government today, we will get the best out of our leaders. So I want to encourage our listeners to always wake up to, to taking responsibility for the future we are gradually building. The government, the, the officers there, they are our people. We elected them, we chose them. So if they do what we don't like, we need to call, call them to order. Yes. So for me, we need to begin to challenge the status quo. Mm. 
by right. rising up and speaking out and making our impute. M- Mr. Ikene, uh, who's the former UPP gubernatorial candidate in Enugu State, thank you very much for being part of the thank program so this much. morning. We do appreciate thank your you. contribution. It is still the platform, the pinnacle of all discussions right here on Flow 94.9 FM. I know you have you, you have your thoughts, you have your opinions. Uh, you want to share them with me this morning. The lines are very much open. 0808 182 or 0811 You can also drop messages on 0906 510 Of course, we're looking at uh, that uh, live uh, pen, live uh, pension uh, for ex governors and uh, their deputies, its effect on governance and development. Hello, good morning to you. Welcome to the platform. Good morning, Francis. Michael is my name. Sorry, Michael. My name is Kingsley, calling from Omaha. You're welcome, Kingsley. Did I hear you say that your state has passed that law? It's in the law. Uh, it, it's a law, right? Uh, under whose state. watch was it passed? Uh? I have to. I don't have that at hand right now, but I, I will get back to you on that uh, just before the, the end of the, the show. Time, the, the time has come for the citizens to stand up. My father has served as a public servant in this state for 35 years, no pension, no gratuity. How could a man serve just for eight years as a governor? He's golfing this song for himself and his family. This is our treasure. This is wickedness. And this is the highest wickedness. In fact, this is witchcraft. These governors are supposed to be stoned to death. No, Honestly, no, we do, we do not. That, that's to the extreme, please. Let's be guided with our utterance, utterances. Very, very important. This is a conversation, a civil one that we always have here. It's a radio and uh, a, a millions of persons are listening at the same time. So very, very important that we follow the ethics uh, guiding uh, the civil discussion. Thank you very much. Hello, good morning to you. Hello, good morning. You're welcome. Thank you. Ugonna Eric. All right, you're welcome. Welcome. you're welcome, Ugonna. Yeah. Um, as a matter of fact, I don't think there is anybody in Nigeria today that will want to support that kind of a bill at this time. We have too much challenges. Insecurity, poverty, you know, health men, you know, gangsterism and so many kidnapping and so much around the length and breadth of the country and all a legislative house will just do is sit down and begin to pass a bill that contains humongous unimaginable amount you know in a country where yesterday they told us that uh, unemployment is at 33 percent and then the illiteracy is high and the you know inflation and so many things i don't know sometimes uh, the way some of these uh, political class you know handle affairs it's like they are just on a one-way ticket to you know you know who do it the entire populace I think it is immoral, you know, and it's very unfortunate and condemnable that from the southeast, I would think that, uh, you know, better health uh, are prevailing. They would seem to be, you know, legislating over everything. I don't want it suspended. In my own opinion, they should cancel it, throw it into the abyss, and focus on good governance and uh, make better use of the opportunity. Nobody in his right senses would support such a bill at this time. And I want to implore the people of Enugu to insist that those who the bill who does not see the light of day and that they should not think of continuing with it any further. Uh, other good states who have it should find a way to repeal it and throw it away so that we focus on better government. If the whole place is better governed and positioned, nobody will be talking about uh, whether you will get to 12 billion naira for medical or whatever. It will be nice for everybody. It's the greed of some persons that is making this country the way it is today. So let them stop spedal on these things. All right, Life you're going You know? Please, it's uh, condemnable. Thank th- you. Thank you very much for your contribution. Hello, good morning to you. Welcome to the platform. Hello, you're live on radio. Good morning. Okay, keep your calls coming. And also, you can drop me messages on both the SMS, uh, that's the traditional message, and also the WhatsApp on 0906 510 Hello, good morning to you. Welcome to the platform. Good morning, my beloved. You're, Michael. you're welcome. Okay. Uh, this is Emmanuel, my, my, my friends who come in the place of Madrid. I'm calling from Omaha, as usual. You're welcome, Good Emmanuel. Good morning. Okay. Um, I've, I've listened to all those people you spoke with over the phone. They have said, they have said it all. Your last uh, 
guest you spoke with, he said something striking mm. that um, our less affair attitude should be looked into when it comes to concerns and government policies. A situation whereby everybody will just um, de develop a nonchalant attitude. Uh, it doesn't concern us. Let them do their things by their, 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 the way they want it. No, we should stop that. And I'm going to use this opportunity to add, uh, also call on the people of other state to rise up against this bill. I never knew that this uh, pension bill for for health governors I I I I United States here. I don't. I wonder why some government officials or some of these political appointees will never be honest. They they usually come out here and tell you that uh, uh, the former governor, uh, the one representing the central, let me not mention his name. You know his you know his name. They say that he, 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 he does not uh, receive any pension uh, as an health governor. But we have this pension bill in other states that is in place. I'm not confirming payment anyways. I'm just confirming that the law is in place. The law is in place. It's, right. it's very likely that they are paying them now. See, the, the law is in place. It's very likely that they are paying them. So what I'm saying is this. Let them, re let, let Adia also rise up and do something about it. Let them re repeal this thing also in Adia. Uh, even if, as, even if former governors should receive entitlement, even if they should receive entitlement, we, 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 the first thing we should do is to reduce their money, reduce their money while they are in office. You cannot be receiving millions of naira while you are in office. If you leave office tomorrow, you still want to be receiving millions of naira. When you are in office, you don't need their money from 500,000, you know, 5 million to maybe 500,000. So when you leave office, we also continue paying you 500,000. You cannot be receiving 5 million naira at the end of uh, uh, while you are in office. When you leave office, you also want to receive, you'll be receiving millions of naira. Whereas pensioners have been served for 35 years, they have been suffering. I have so many elder uh, 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 colleagues that are pensioners. Right. They are suffering. All right, they are suffering. Wrap up so let them reduce, uh, reduce, reduce, the money, reduce the money of the governors while they are in office. Reduce their money. When they leave office, we also continue to pay them. All right. Yeah, Th the th by the, and, 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 so that's my thing anyway. Thank, thank you, you very thank much you very for much. your contribution. For the person that asked the question, uh, the state, Abia State's uh, pension law for governors was signed uh, into law in 2001. That was in 2001. Hello, good morning to you. Good morning. You're welcome. Uh, uh, is it Mike? Yes, it's Michael. You're live on Flow 94.9 FM. Okay. I'm Uzobona calling from Moloko. You're welcome. Uh, uh, to be honest, military rule is more is more better. Oh, okay. That's, military that, rule. That's not the topic of discussion. There's nothing like democracy. We are in trouble. We are suffering. I'm telling you, we are tired of hunger. Anything is more better than. Uh, all right, Th thank you for your contribution. Anyway, sir, that's not a topic of discussion. Hello, good morning to you. Thank you for joining Hello. us. Yes. Hello, good morning, Michael. Good morning. Mike, I'm very happy. I'm also with friends with from here in Omo National Board. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> Mike, I'm very very grateful on what happened in um in any state. My question is this. That decision by any state government, uh, the lawmakers, is not um, is not binded because they say they are stepping aside. I would I would have loved them to have push that particular bill into their in, in, in bill list because that bill may resuscitate itself in in the future time in any good. Now, uh, but if uh, if 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 it's something to be taken care of, mm. let that bill be expunged, my brother, because one cannot have his brother eat it at the same time. An appointed position is quite different from an offer of appointment. The, the, the governorship and their, their deputy, they have been elected with a minimum, I mean, with a limited number of times. If they go, they go, because they have taken what they ought to have taken in, 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 govern, in government. But that of, uh, an offer of appointment that will take up to 30, 40 years is quite different, my brother. So let other states in Nigeria take a clue from what is going on in any good state. All right, thank you for your take, uh, Mr. Prince Will. Hello, good morning to you. Welcome to the platform. Okay, uh, on the SMS line, uh, Sonny from Umwa here says, Good morning, Mike. Why should the governors be paid something after serving for just eight years? Can't you, ima can't you imagine their loots after these eight years? Those are allegations, anyways. That even a church rat who happened to be the governor may become a multi billionaire. Uh, Mike, the people will not act unless unless informed and led. Hello, good morning to you. Hello, good morning, sir. You're welcome. Uh, I, have, I am GCR, I'm a retiree. You're welcome. Uh, I just want to uh, get disturbed loudly by letting you know 
that even as I'm talking to you now, since uh, March 2020 till this March 2021, I have been receiving half of my pension in this state. And I have not seen any dying as it affects my areas of pensions and even gratuity for the past seven years I retired. How can one begin to think of uh, giving pension and gratuity to somebody who even at the end of his tenure must have uh, handled our funds the way he liked and was paid money and not only that, collected various uh, votes and went home as a, a governor. This is unfair. It's like these governors want to finish the retirees. Please, say something about it. And uh, Mr. Mike, I would want you to make it as a topic so that some of us would add our voices. We are suffering. We are being paid half of our pension since March till this moment. Some received 3,500, others to receive 5,000. I have an uncle who received 7,500 naira for pension, half of his, his pension. It is, it is unheard of. It is, it is wickedness. Let us right. discuss this thing. Make it at a topic one day so that we discuss over some of these things. We are dying. All right. Thank, thank, you, thank, very much. thank you for your contribution. Let's look at the messages on the SMS line now. Good morning, Mike. Uh, in my own point of view, I always emphasize that the legislature should be blamed more on this issue. Ucha Chikeze from Akole Imehi. All right. Uh, good morning, Michael. Do you know that obviously the government is owing pensioners two years and some months and nothing has been said about it? All right. That's uh, without a name. Anyways, uh, those are the messages and also uh, your calls. So we do appreciate and also many thanks to uh, my resource persons on the program for the analysis this morning. Of course, that's it on the platform for today, Wednesday edition, right here on Flow 94.9 FM. Many thanks to the producer, Samson Eze, and also Samson's associate, uh, Uyai Jimmy. And also the guys behind the visuals on our Facebook page, Solomon and Stanley. Join me on Friday on another edition of the program, which will be the last edition for the week. My name is Michael. Oni, do enjoy the rest of your day.